Now on your feet at five, when Ohio releases its COVID count tomorrow, we will have a better idea of how this new Omicron subvariant is behaving statewide. But it's definitely, as you know, taking over the rest of the country. Yeah, so I think we have an idea of where it's going exactly, here, yeah. but the numbers are going to be interesting to see. Senior health correspondent Monica Robbins joins us now. She's going to explain what we need to know. Good afternoon, Monica. Hi, guys. Yeah, you know what? As of last week, BA5 made up more than 45% of the cases in Ohio, and I'm betting that's going to be much higher tomorrow. There is still a lot we need to learn about these subvariants. We know they're far more contagious, but fortunately, we are not seeing a rise in ICU admissions or the need for ventilators. Our protection from vaccines, natural infection, and boosters is waning, but still working. And even though BA5 has the ability to skirt around immune protection, it does give some a wicked cold. BA5 is, is causing disease similar to other Omicron uh, variants, which has been less severe than the previous waves. Some of that is probably due to underlying immunity because people have been infected or been vaccinated. And some of that might be due to the nature of the virus itself. Yeah, those are the things we need to figure out. Symptoms also seem to be wide ranging. They can include a fever, runny nose, sore throat, headache, and a persistent cough. Also night sweats, that was another one that was interesting. And we are seeing a slight bump in hospitalizations, but we will get a better idea tomorrow of what the impact is when the numbers come out. And Dr. Rhodes says all the normal precautions are still advised, the ones you don't wanna hear about anymore. Masking, social distancing, obviously getting vaccinated and washing your hands wash your hands <laughs> all right um do we have anything else here i was gonna say i think you asked all the questions yesterday so i feel like we we know what we're what we're headed towards <laughs> yeah i we, we i hope we do um I, I i don't think there's any surprises that are on the horizon here are there no, but there was a new study that came out that we're going to exclude you from okay. right yeah, now. That's why I looked at Laura. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do have a question. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, you're right. Wait, I, I was don't... waiting, Laura. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I'm going to kind of sleep. He, yeah, he so did not want to get involved. <laughs> that was in this my one. fault. Wow, I did not pick up what you were trying to. Okay, so <laughs> listen, I remember when the vaccines first came out, and a lot of people were talking about how it was impacting the menstrual cycles, even a lot of my friends. Is there any truth to this when it comes to the vaccine? There's a question. There we go. Yeah, there is. There is. Uh, and actually, there is some truth to it because new research just found that the vaccines did have a slight impact on cycle length. And a recent published analysis found that 42% of people with regular menstrual cycles said they bled more heavily than usual after the vaccination. 44% reported no change and 14% said they had a lighter cycle. The study also found those post-menopause or using certain long-term contraceptives experienced breakthrough or unexpected, unexpected bleeding. 39,000 women ages 18 to 80 were fully vaccinated with fully vaccinated rather with Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, Johnson and Johnson and Novavax vaccines. Those were all the women who were included in the study. So this was pretty far reaching and and somewhat global. But again, it was an analysis. They were asking people um, through the computer to fill out a uh, a a you know, a study sheet, mm -hmm. essentially, and that's what they were finding. So, yeah, if you were one of those people who thought something was kind of off, you're not wrong. The question you and I were talking about earlier is, what does it mean? Yeah, like, should we be worried? Yeah, and I, I don't think so right now because everything seems to be fine. But the study, like I said, there's so much we don't know. Yeah. So these studies are ongoing, and that's why we need to pay attention to any of these little intricacies that seem to be popping up everywhere. All right, Monica, thanks. Sure. Thanks for answering my last question. <laughs>